Esther took careful steps into the room, her attention instantly drawn to the window. She gently pulled back the curtains, allowing the soft glow of daylight to fill the space. Turning around, she saw her husband Cody fiddling with his medical kit on the bed. With a worried tone, she asked, Cody, how are you feeling today? Caught off guard, Cody quickly hid his phone under the pillow, attempting to replace his surprise with a look of mild unease. Uh, Esther, he responded, forcing a weak smile. I'm hanging in there. You always have a way of checking in on me. I do feel a bit better today. Esther gave a gentle sigh as she took a seat beside him, the bed dipping slightly beneath her. You can be so secretive sometimes. Should we have a doctor come over and examine you? Cody's eyes darted open and he hastily shook his head, his voice tinged with worry. No, no, Esther. Listen, this isn't the first time. I occasionally experience these blood pressure surges and they make me feel a bit unwell, but they always pass. You recall, right? This has happened a few times in the past. He took her hand, offering a reassuring squeeze. But I have to admit, it's been more frequent lately. I genuinely think it might be best to consult another doctor rather than just depending on these medications. Cody discreetly tucked the note into his pocket before walking over to Esther. Everything's alright, honey. I appreciate your concern. Esther felt uneasy. Not long ago, she had a heated disagreement with a few friends who insinuated something was amiss with her husband. Rumors were circulating that Cody had married her for her wealth. With his recurring illnesses and constant presence at home, Esther began to wonder if there might be some truth to the whispers. Cody glanced at her, adopting a playful, pleading expression. Listen, I want to be the best for you. I never want anyone to believe you settled with me. Please, don't let these rumors cloud your judgment. She bent down, placing a gentle kiss on his forehead. Cody, you're more than enough for me. Let people talk. At the end of the day, it's our bond that matters. He chuckled, holding her hand tightly. You always bring clarity. Thank you. Throughout their five years of marriage, Esther had discovered various facets of Cody's character. She realized he often showed a side of himself that wasn't entirely authentic. Beneath the cheerful facades lay a vulnerability he rarely let anyone see, yet her affection for him never wavered. However, despite her worry for Cody, Esther was currently engrossed in urgent work issues. Her company was in the midst of vital negotiations that required her undivided focus. The outcomes of these talks could dictate the firm's direction and she couldn't be sidetracked. Juggling personal concerns with professional duties was challenging, but Esther was resolute in managing both with poise and determination. Although Cody held a significant title in Esther's business, he was more ceremonial than functional. He was charismatic and outgoing, making him the perfect face for the company at formal events and social gatherings. However, when it came to the day-to-day -day operations and understanding the core of the business, he often struggled. Esther had hoped that introducing him to the business would offer a fresh perspective. However, it quickly became clear that Cody's grasp of the industry was quite shallow. Technical terms, financial predictions, and strategy meetings that were vital to the company often left him feeling out of his depth. Always supportive, Esther went out of her way to create an impression that she leaned on Cody's expertise, even though in reality, she seldom did. This facade was for the benefit of outsiders and also to boost Cody's confidence. While she would discuss business matters with him and listen to his input, she didn't always act on his advice. Cody seemed committed to his role at the company. Whether he truly saw his own worth or was just excellent at maintaining the act, he was always punctual, handling his responsibilities with care. He seemed to appreciate the regularity, the structure, and maybe even the perceived sense of importance his position gave him. Their age difference, with Esther being 41 and Cody 32, often turned heads. Esther carried herself with a sophisticated grace, her years of experience evident in her assured manner and graceful walk. In contrast, Cody, even at 32, exuded a youthful enthusiasm, 
a liveliness that sometimes clashed with Esther's more composed style. Their romance was unexpected. Initially, their professional lives intersected within the confines of the company. When Cody first started working under Esther's leadership as a manager, his contributions were honestly lackluster. As a result, they seldom crossed paths in the busy corridors of the corporate world. On a calm evening, Esther left her office later than usual. Reaching her car, she noticed her mistake. She had left the headlights on. With a deep breath, she climbed in, hoping the battery wasn't completely drained. The dashboard lit up, but when she tried the ignition, the engine remained silent. A wave of unease washed over her. The thought of calling for a tow truck or a battery replacement service seemed tedious. Although Esther had the means to employ a chauffeur, she cherished her independence. She took pride in driving her trusty old Accord, a testament to her humble nature. As she fumbled with her phone to find a nearby mechanic, the screen suddenly went blank. Out of battery, she couldn't help but chuckle at her luck. Just as she was contemplating her next move, a knock on her window startled her. She turned to see a familiar face, though it took her a moment to place it. Esther, everything all right? The young man asked. After a brief pause, filled with surprise and recognition, she queried. We've met, haven't we? He gave a gentle smile. Yes, I've been working in your company for a couple of months now, on the third floor. Ah, uh, Cody, the manager she had heard of, but never really interacted with, mainly because his work hadn't particularly stood out. I noticed you're struggling with your car. Battery issues? He inquired. She nodded. I left the headlights on, and now my phone's dead too. Please, use my phone if you need to. I wish I had a car. I would have offered you a ride home, Cody offered genuinely. It's all right. I'll figure it out, she replied with a warm smile. He nodded. Okay then, take care. See you at work. Watching him leave, Esther was taken aback. In her position, people often sought to impress her or gain her favor, especially in such situations. Cody's simple act of kindness, free of ulterior motives, was a refreshing change. Caught in an unexpected bind, Esther hesitated only briefly before calling out to Cody, asking if she might borrow his phone after all. Cody turned around, his smile warm and understanding. As they waited for the mechanic to deliver a new battery, Cody sought to alleviate the tension. He struck up a conversation about her management style, suggesting some adjustments that might enhance its effectiveness. To Esther, it felt like a gentle critique, a hint that she could be doing better. Most of her employees often sugarcoated their opinions or outright flattered her, but Cody was refreshingly candid. Yet, he didn't stop there. He also spoke of how her speeches at company meetings had inspired many, including some of his close colleagues. He commended her for the elegance and poise with which she tackled challenges, details that most overlooked amidst the daily hustle of corporate life. Cody's observations transcended mere professional acknowledgement. He highlighted traits in Esther that she'd perhaps overlooked or forgotten in the midst of her demanding role. While she was accustomed to many trying to woo her, often for superficial reasons like her wealth or physical appeal, it had been ages since someone truly saw and appreciated the depth of her character. Over the years, life had handed Esther its share of challenges leading her to erect protective barriers around herself. But Cody's sincere words felt like a gentle knock on those walls, reminding her of the genuine connections that could be formed even in the most unexpected of circumstances. The dim lighting of the late evening was interrupted by the tow truck's strong headlights. The buzz of a taxi was close behind, yet despite the cold of the night, Esther felt the warmth surrounding her. The brief yet genuine connection she shared with Cody, peppered with kind words and sincere acknowledgement, made the night less daunting. When Esther hopped into the taxi and Cody gave a friendly wave goodbye, both felt the strings of a connection that would soon grow beyond the usual employer-employee dynamic. It was the dawn of an unexpected chapter in both their lives. One sunny day during lunch, they coincidentally found themselves at the same cafe, a tad nervous, Cody took a leap of faith and asked her out for dinner. 
Their ensuing romance was so passionate that at times Esther felt overwhelmed by the intensity of her feelings. Everywhere she turned, people whispered warnings about the perils of getting involved with someone younger and frankly quite charming. Esther had to take a step back, wondering if she was once again getting lost in the whirlwind of love, much like she had before. Years ago, Esther was married to Kevin, a kind-hearted dentist. Their love story was the stuff of dreams. Back then, Esther was neck deep in her business school studies. One restless night, sleep barely touched her. Tired and with an aching tooth, she made a spur-of-the-moment decision to visit a dental clinic the next day. Upon arriving at the clinic where Kevin practiced, she was told she'd need to make an appointment. But the throbbing pain in her mouth was becoming unbearable. In a moment of sheer desperation, she rushed into a treatment room, interrupting Kevin while he was attending another patient. Although taken aback by the sudden entrance, Kevin's compassionate nature shone through. Recognizing the distress in Esther's eyes, he quickly shifted his attention to help her. That day, Kevin didn't just ease her toothache, he also sparked the beginning of a passionate love affair. However, the path their relationship took was more intricate than that chance encounter would suggest. Esther was drawn to Kevin's depth of thought and knowledge. In contrast, Kevin was completely enchanted by Esther's determination and sharp wit. They seemed inseparable, their chemistry palpable. Their close ones could clearly see how perfectly they complemented each other, often mentioning that they seemed like the two puzzle pieces fitting snugly together. Within just a year, on a surprise mountain trip under a glittering starlit sky, Kevin asked for Esther's hand in marriage, and she joyfully accepted. Yet, as the rosy days of their early romance faded, strains began to emerge. Kevin's demanding dental career meant he was often stressed and it didn't stay confined to his clinic, he brought it home. Esther tried to be understanding, but the continuous late nights and frequent changes in plans began to wear on her. Kevin felt Esther wasn't empathetic enough to the pressures he faced at work. The beginning might have been magical, but Esther started seeing a side of Kevin that she hadn't expected. At first it was subtle, a snide remark or an unexplained coldness, but these incidents grew in frequency and intensity, revealing a troubling pattern of emotional manipulation and dominance. Kevin's protective nature turned possessive. He constantly quizzed Esther about her whereabouts, the company she kept, and would get upset if she hadn't checked in with him. He criticized her relentlessly for her professional choices down to the clothes she wore. Under his constant scrutiny, Esther's once radiant and self-reliant spirit began to wane. One evening, after spending time with her friends, Esther returned home to find an irate Kevin. Her phone had been on silent, so she missed his numerous calls. His face twisted with anger. Kevin confronted her, accusing her of infidelity and thoughtlessness. The disagreement spiraled, and in a fit of rage, Kevin struck Esther for the first time. The betrayal and shock of that moment paralyzed her. She couldn't believe that the man she once saw as her protector could be capable of such violence. Immediately regretting his actions, Kevin was filled with guilt and quickly apologized, promising he'd never hurt her again. Still deeply in love and clinging to the hope of returning to their earlier, happier days, Esther forgave him. But this marked the beginning of a dangerous pattern. While the physical violence was infrequent, the emotional torment was relentless. Kevin's apologies often came with excuses that shifted the blame onto Esther with remarks like, You should have answered your phone, or Work has been really stressful for me. Each altercation chipped away at Esther's self-worth. Their relationship took another turn when Esther discovered she was pregnant. The news initially brought joy, but soon, during her early pregnancy checkups, the doctors identified complications. Expensive medications were needed to ensure the baby's well-being and reduce the risk of birth defects, but Kevin's reaction was far from supportive. Upon learning about the costs involved, he exploded. Are you serious? We can't spend a fortune just to risk having a child with problems. What if the treatments don't work? Maybe we should consider ending this pregnancy. Later we can try again for a healthy child. 
Esther was devastated. Fighting back tears, she said, This is our baby girl. She'll be okay. She just needs this treatment to have a chance. Kevin, she's our daughter. Without another word, Kevin stormed out. Esther was shattered. She held on to a sliver of hope, thinking Kevin might come to his senses. Mustering up courage, she decided to confront him at his clinic. But what she witnessed there was the ultimate betrayal. Kevin locked in an intimate embrace with another woman. This heartbreak was twofold. Esther didn't just lose her unborn child, but also her faith in love and trust. Finding solace in solitude, Esther's home became her haven of healing and self-growth. Free from Kevin's suffocating presence, she thrived, unfolding and rediscovering herself in ways she hadn't thought possible. She wasn't seeking vengeance for the wounds Kevin had inflicted, but life, with its twist of fate, would ensure he faced his comeuppance. Empowered by her newfound self-worth, Esther pursued her career with zeal. She secured a prominent role in a top-tier firm. This wasn't just any workplace. It was a beacon for many, but only a reality for a select few. The painful experiences with Kevin, where she constantly sifted through truth and lies, had unknowingly honed her instincts. From the ashes of that tumultuous relationship, she emerged with a razor-sharp ability to discern sincerity from deceit. While she hadn't wished for this discerning knack, she realized it was a blessing in disguise. In life's vast tapestry, where things are often not black and white, Understanding these gray areas can make or break relationships, particularly in the corporate world where the stakes soar and every word counts, this skill of seeing beyond the obvious becomes invaluable. Utilizing her unique ability, Esther dove into the business world. At first she acted as a guiding hand for companies during negotiations, spotting the unspoken motives of their allies and rivals. Time and again, she helped firms clinch beneficial deals and dodge potential drawbacks. Her uncanny knack for seeing the truth left many in awe, earning her the title of the corporate seer. But Esther didn't stop there. Recognizing a wider role for herself, she aimed higher. She envisioned herself as more than just a counselor. She saw potential as a holistic consultant, offering advice on business strategy, management, and expansion. Bolstered by this idea, she established her very own consulting agency. Time passed and her small startup burgeoned into a thriving enterprise. From being a solo venture, it expanded into a team of hand-selected consultants, each molded under Esther's guidance. Amidst her professional successes, Cody's heartfelt compliment was a beacon, reminding her of her intrinsic value. It wasn't just the words, but the sincere admiration they conveyed. They prompted her to reflect on her tumultuous past, reinforcing her understanding of self-worth and the peril of getting lost in another's shadow. With renewed vigor, Esther pledged to value herself, ensuring she'd never again overlook her worth. Yet, as Cody proposed, whispers and doubts emerged. Friends and colleagues insinuated he was merely enticed by her wealth, yearning for a life of opulence and predicted that he would eventually wander. Before tying the knot, they sat down for a heart-to-heart. -heart. Esther opened up about their age gap and the looming possibility of Cody's changing feelings. She assured him she'd understand if he ever chose another path or found someone new, but she had a singular plea that she would always be the first to hear. Cody, I need to know that honesty is crucial for me. If things aren't working, let's discuss it. I'm mature enough to handle any situation without drama. Esther voiced her feelings. Cody appeared taken aback by her straightforwardness. After a pause, he walked up to her, enveloping her in a comforting embrace. He was aware of the wounds she bore from past relationships and wanted to choose the right words to reassure her. I cherish you, Esther, for the person you are. I vow to stand by you forever. Esther, feeling reassured, accepted his words. Even though Cody had a penchant for indulging in life's pleasures, be it lounging around, enjoying gourmet meals, or donning stylish attire, Esther didn't mind pampering him from time to time. Standing up, she informed him, I have a prolonged meeting today. I'll be back later. Cody responded half-jokingly, I swear with your meetings, it feels like I might just wither away from loneliness. Esther tried to appease him, next month should be less hectic. How about a weekend getaway? 
That sounds perfect. All I see now is endless work. She chuckled, deciding not to remind him of the numerous breaks he took more often than actual work. Esther's upcoming business meeting was at a charming little restaurant. She was dealing with a particularly challenging but affluent client. For the past three months, she had been diligently wooing him, organizing dinners, presenting company reports, and establishing trust. Today was the day they would finalize their agreement. Esther arrived ahead of schedule and decided to arrange the refreshments. Once she had ordered for the group, she took a moment to enjoy a coffee using the peaceful lull to go over the contract's details. The restaurant's ambience, accentuated by mellow tunes, made it easier to focus. However, her concentration was interrupted when the waiter served her drink. Looking up to thank him, her eyes widened in shock. The window beside her offered a clear view of the street outside. There, unmistakably, was Cody engaged in a phone conversation. Her heart raced. How could it be? Just earlier, he had been at home, seemingly under the weather, snuggled under a blanket. She blinked repeatedly, doubting her eyes, but there he was, unmistakably, her husband. As the seconds ticked, Cody began moving away. A quick look at her wristwatch showed that she still had about 20 minutes before her clients arrived. She had a brief window of opportunity. While still unsure about her next move, she knew she had to act. She signaled for the waiter's attention. I need to step out momentarily. I'll be back before my guests arrive. Please ensure our orders remain as placed, she instructed. With an understanding nod from the waiter, Esther hurried out. She caught a glimpse of Cody just as he was about to turn a corner. She trailed him discreetly, using the buildings and trees as a cover. A whirlwind of emotions engulfed her. Was he seeing someone else? Was he squandering the money she provided on another woman? Anger flared within her, but it was tinged with sadness. While part of her was on the brink of tears, another part was already plotting how to confront him. Cody was completely unaware of the storm brewing if Esther's fears were confirmed. Taking a deep breath, Esther stealthily peered around the corner to spot Cody. He had just slipped into an apartment. A burning rage surged within her and a voice echoed in her mind. If this is betrayal, he'll regret it. Bracing herself for confrontation, Esther pressed the doorbell. To her surprise, a young girl answered. The girl's eyes widened in astonishment before calling out, Cody, someone's here for you. A flustered Cody emerged. His eyes met Esther's and he audibly swallowed, the shock evident on his face. Esther, why are you here? For a moment he was at a loss for words. He took a deep breath and buried his face in his hands. Esther stared intently at him, expecting an explanation. Catching her accusatory look, Cody hastily began. Esther, it's not what it looks like. Please come in. Suspicion flashed across Esther's face. Why should I? Explain yourself, Cody. He hushed her. Shh, keep it down. You'll frighten Hannah. Just come inside. With a mix of confusion and growing anger, Esther stepped into the apartment. Cody took a moment, collecting his thoughts before addressing her. Before you jump to conclusions, please listen. She gave a slight nod, indicating him to continue. Pointing to the young girl, he said, This is Hannah, my daughter from a previous relationship. And over there is Madison, my cousin. Esther's confusion deepened and her feelings of anger began to merge with betrayal. However, before she could react, Cody gently sat her down, taking her hand in his. Around seven years ago, I was in a relationship with a woman named Abigail. Cody began, his voice trembling slightly. It ended on a sour note and I was unaware that she was expecting our child. Abigail maintained contact only with Madison after our breakup. A tragic car accident took Abigail's life, leaving Hannah, our daughter, severely injured. By then, you and I were married. Madison took Hannah under her wing, but there were moments she couldn't cope, and that's when I'd pretend to be unwell or say I was helping friends to be with Hannah. He paused, pain evident in his eyes. I deeply regret hiding this from you. It's just... I didn't know how to bring it up. Esther, trying to process the bombshell, asked, Why keep it a secret? Cody's reason for staying silent was layered with complexity. 
Upon discovering he had a daughter, society's whispers grew louder, suggesting he married Esther solely for her wealth. He feared that revealing Hannah's existence would only intensify these rumors and possibly make Esther doubt him. He hoped to settle things before eventually letting Esther in on the trip. Suddenly, pieces of the puzzle fell into place for Esther. The numerous times he'd taken money from her were cold and sick, she had assumed he was splurging on luxuries. In reality, he was supporting his daughter. Inside the apartment, Esther's attention was caught by some papers on a desk bearing her company's logo. Intrigued, she approached the desk to get a better look. Among them was a copy of the strategic plan she had recently been briefed on by one of her managers. And what's all this, Cody? Cody sighed. You've always stood by me, even when things didn't quite add up. Without even realizing, you've supported me and Hannah. I wanted to give back, in my own way. Esther slowly pieced things together. Cody's secretive behavior finally made sense. Contrary to his portrayal, he was a significant contributor behind the scenes at her company. He had been crafting many of the business strategies presented to the team, yet he'd ensured his wife remained oblivious to his involvement, showcasing his humility and integrity. Glancing at Hannah, Esther noticed the girl's striking resemblance to Cody. Hannah, seated in a wheelchair, held onto a book, her eyes reflecting a hint of melancholy. Cody's gaze shifted to Hannah. Through his eyes, Esther recognized the profound love of a father willing to move mountains for his child. She felt a surge of warmth deep within her, a feeling of connection she'd yearned for. Suddenly, the wall clock caught Esther's attention and she exclaimed, Oh no, I'm late. Without another word, she hurried out, racing back to the restaurant. Though the urgency of the meeting prompted her departure, her mind was a whirlwind of emotions. The business discussions proceeded without a hedge. Esther's knack for separating personal and professional matters was evident. But as the last person departed, she took a deep breath, pressing her temples. She grappled with the revelations, pondering on the steps she and they as a couple needed to take. Cody spent that tumultuous day at Madison's place. As evening approached, he bade farewell to both Madison and Hannah, his heart heavy. When he neared his home, an unexpected sight met his eyes. Movers carrying out furniture from their house, among the items were pieces he had brought with him from his old rented apartment when he first moved in with Esther. He had attempted to reach out to Esther numerous times, but her phone was switched off. For someone so meticulous in every other aspect, Esther surprisingly often forgot to charge her device. A sinking feeling settled in Cody's gut. He had concealed a significant part of his life from Esther, and these movers were possibly the result of that deception. Although he was in a better financial state than before, he knew the future could be unpredictable without Esther's support, but he was determined to find a way, even if it meant taking on another job. Resigned, Cody entered the house, settling into the living room. He tried to absorb every detail, thinking this might be his last chance before being asked to depart from the home they shared. However, in a surprising turn of events, the movers who had been taking furniture out began bringing in newer, elegant pieces. Puzzled, Cody stood up, trying to make sense of the situation. One of the movers, noticing his confusion, asked, Sir, should we place these in the usual spots? Baffled, Cody looked around, trying to piece things together. Esther's loud entrance, with her heels clicking assertively on the floor, pulled him back to reality. When she saw him, her tone was more exasperated than angry. Didn't you hear us pull up? Why are you sitting here in the dark? Esther questioned. Flipping on the light, Cody's surprise intensified. Alongside Esther were Madison and a beaming Hannah in her wheelchair, tightly clutching a large, comically eared plush rabbit. Esther, seeing Cody's stunned expression, explained, After discovering everything, from the sacrifices you have made for Hannah to the exceptional work you've done for her company, I realized there is more to our life together than secrets and misunderstandings. She motioned towards the movers and the new furniture. We're setting up a room for Hannah. Every child deserves to be close to their parent. And if Madison is willing, she can stay with us to help care for Hannah. We'll compensate her properly, of course. Esther's softening gaze met Cody's. I wish you'd trust me enough to share this earlier, but we can move past it. Cody felt a wave of relief wash over him. 
the weight of his secret had been heavy and Esther's understanding was more than he could have ever hoped for. That evening, the house echoed with heartfelt conversations. Cody confessed his deep-seated fear of losing Esther and expressed immense gratitude for not just accepting him but also embracing Hannah into their lives. Cody had been piecing together a plan, something bold to prove his dedication and loyalty to Esther. He had stumbled upon information regarding Kevin, Esther's ex-husband, which she was unaware of. Specifically, Cody learned that Kevin had been married twice before his union with Esther. Despite his portrayal of a regular guy, Kevin had accumulated a significant wealth. Furthermore, Cody unearthed the fact that Kevin's previous divorce had never been formally finalized. This oversight was where an opportunity for Esther's vindication existed. In his investigations, Cody had located Monica, Kevin's supposed ex-wife, and spoken with her. She revealed that Kevin had failed to surrender the assets the court had demanded, conveniently claiming he'd misplaced them. One bright morning, with the sun shining brilliantly, Cody beckoned Esther to join him on the porch, suggesting they take a moment to appreciate the serene surroundings. But what unfolded next was anything but expected. Within minutes, a large truck rumbled up to their home, offloading an array of furniture items. Following closely behind was a sleek, familiar sports car, a car Esther recognized instantly. As she stared, wide-eyed and astounded, Cody explained, I thought you might enjoy seeing some of Kevin's possessions, considering the circumstances. He had coordinated with Monica to have these items paraded past Esther's residence, hoping to offer her a small taste of satisfaction. The gesture was Cody's way of showing that he had Esther's back. Always. One sunny afternoon, Esther sat on the porch, tears streaming down her face as she clutched a piece of paper. Noticing this, Hannah hurriedly walked over, her face etched with concern. Mom, what's wrong? Are those terrible headaches bothering you again? Hannah inquired. Hannah and Esther shared a deep bond, although not biologically related. From the day Esther wholeheartedly embraced Hannah, the young girl always referred to her as mother. Hannah had an innate ability to uplift Esther's spirits, especially on days when stress or fatigue took its toll on her. Wiping away her tears with a chuckle, Esther responded, No, sweetie, these aren't tears of pain, they're tears of joy. Hannah glanced at the paper in Esther's hand, realizing it was a sonogram scan. Esther's eyes sparkled as she shared the news. I'm going to be a mother, Hannah. The revelation filled the air, making the moment even more poignant and special for both of them. Cody walked through the front door, his brow furrowed with concentration, possibly mulling over some work-related issue. But as soon as he laid eyes on Hannah's beaming face, a soft smile spread across his own. Dad, Hannah started her voice shaking with excitement. There's something you should know. As she relayed Esther's revelation, Cody's eyes widened in surprise. He took a moment, letting the news sink in, before he approached Esther, pulling her into a gentle embrace. The two shared a look, a blend of joy, fear, and hope. Hannah, observing the moment, said, You two are going to be amazing, again. Esther chuckled, holding back tears. It's been a while since we had a baby in the house, but I believe we'll manage, especially with your help, Hannah. Cody nodded, adding, It's another adventure, isn't it? And we face it together as a family. The room filled with warmth as they shared the moment, cherishing the prospect of their family growing. Esther's past fears and insecurities might occasionally cast shadows, but with the love and support surrounding her, she was ready to face the future.